How's it going guys? Logan from Knights of Horror, your physical media collector on the channel. Today we're going to do a special video to my favorite director of all time, John Carpenter. Uh, I love John Carpenter. I've met him uh, quite a few times. I've seen him live in concert. He's made just iconic movies and we're going to go through some of those movies, man. So we're going to start uh, all the way from the first film he directed all the way uh, to the last one he directed. Uh, I hate saying last because I'm still hoping he'll do one more one more movie maybe, but we're going to go all the way up until his most recent. So starting uh, number one, we've got a movie he did in film school called Dark Star. I believe it started as a project he did at film school and then after uh, he graduated uh, he ended up making it into a full length movie. And the guy who, uh, God, uh, the guy who, I think co-wrote it with uh, with John, his name is Dan O'Bannon. Uh, he went on to write Alien. Dan O'Bannon had a great career after this. Like it's just cool. The guy who wrote Alien did a project with John Carpenter, who did you know Halloween. And uh, I, I'm not saying this is a great movie though. Uh, you know, it's, it sounds like it should be. Uh, it, it's I wouldn't say it is. Um, Dark Star, it's, it's meant to be a comedy and not a lot of people realize that when they first watched it. Uh, this particular Blu-ray of it, uh, there's a message from Dan O'Bannon and uh, he, he, he writes this funny message pretty much saying, uh, do not take this movie seriously, please. Um, so yeah, it's a fun one. But uh, next up we got John Carpenter's first you know, commercial breakthrough film and that is Assault on Precinct 13. This is a Screen Factory release uh, that I did not include in my previous Screen Factory video because I wanted to save it for you guys in this one. Uh, we got quite a few Screen Factories coming up, but uh, this is the Assault on Precinct 13, John Carpenter Screen Factory. So this is John's technically like his first, you know, commercial film after his college film, Dark Star. Uh, good one. Uh, it's it's got a great ambiance to it. It's got a cool story. It's about a police station that's being. Uh, 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 being taken over by thugs, so it's this police station that's trying trying to defend their precinct. Uh, it's a cool movie, and it's got a brutal child murder in it and, uh, that's on screen. And uh, John Carpenter kind of, from what I've heard, regrets that scene, uh, and they almost got an X rating for that particular scene. So check it out; it's an interesting one. Up next, we've got a classic, my favorite movie, of course. Halloween. Yes, I own a ton of different versions of this movie. This is one of quite a few movie uh, versions I have of uh, Halloween. But yeah, this is this is the Anchor Bay Blu-ray. I uh, can't go wrong with Halloween. Next up, we got a Scream Factory. Uh, Someone's watching me. Uh, this is a for very much forgotten John Carpenter movie. Uh, it's a Scream Factory that didn't release with the slipcover. Um, it's not considered a collector's edition. Uh, like I said in my Scream Factory video, uh, collector's edition Scream Factories come with a slipcover and they don't call some of these collector's editions because I don't, I, from, from my knowledge, there's not enough special features on there for them to call it a collector's edition, but it's the best version of the film you're probably going to see. But anyways, it was made for TV. It's got Adrian Barbeau in it very famous cult movie actor who of course ended up marrying John Carpenter and Adrienne is known for Swamp Thing, Creep Show, The Fog, you know, Escape from New York, so many classic cult movies but Adrienne Barbeau is one of my favorite actresses. Uh, this is uh, her first project with John Carpenter, that's how they met. But yeah, it's a fun uh, kind of mystery thriller made for TV. It was kind of like the Halloween test run. It released after Halloween if I'm not mistaken but was filmed before Halloween. So this is, you know, kind of a like his test run into horror movies. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun movie. Up next, we've got a, a John Carpenter movie that's way out of left field. Uh, I was surprised when I heard that he directed it, and that's a TV adaptation. It's a TV movie called Elvis, starring uh, get this Kurt Russell playing Elvis Presley, and Kurt is awesome in this. Kurt Russell is one of my favorite actors of all time. Uh, and John Carpenter, uh, it really shows how much he loves Elvis in this. Uh, it's a cool biopic of Elvis. It's really entertaining, man. You don't even have to be a big Elvis fan to enjoy it. It's fun. It was made for TV and, uh, yeah, fun movie. And I believe he directed that before Halloween, if I'm not. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Um, I know it released after Halloween. I just can't remember if he directed it before. So don't quote me on that. Up next... Uh, the second feature, f you know, like cinema film after Halloween is uh, The Fog. One of my favorite 
horror movies, favorite films of all time. Uh, this is the Scream Factory, and guess what? I got the Master of Horror, John Carpenter, to sign this copy. Yeah, man, I, I love this movie. I absolutely love it. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis and Adrienne Barbeau in it. It's got an all-star cast. Uh, you got Tom Atkins, you know, of Creep Show. Uh, you got Jamie Lee Curtis, who uh, John says um, he felt bad for Jamie after Halloween because she really wasn't getting any work. So he offered this movie to her, and uh, she, of course, accepted it. She needed the money, and it turns out to be great. And then Adrienne Barbeau, who uh, at the time uh, John was dating her, and then uh, you have uh, Hal Holbrook, who was also in Creep Show with Ad with Adrian Barbeau. They were they were both in the Crate segment. Uh, it's got an all star cast, uh, fantastic film score. Cool fun fact about this: I, I got to go watch uh, this movie where it was filmed uh, last last year in 2019. Uh, the church that was used in this movie was filmed up in Sierra Madre, California and they were showing inside the church, they were showing this film. So it was just awesome sitting in a pew watching this film and looking around the room and seeing where it was all, where all the action was happening. Once in a lifetime opportunity, I really hope they, they end up doing it doing it again after you know COVID-19 is over. Uh, but yeah, great movie, I can go on and on. It's got my favorite film soundtrack of all time. Up next, Escape from New York, man. Ah, oh, Snake Plissken, man. Inspired in Metal Gear Solid. If you love Metal Gear Solid, you'll love this movie. If, if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan and if you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing with your life? Watch this damn movie. Kurt Russell is like, he's an awesome action hero. Uh, I've watched, you know, some, uh, I'm, I'm a walking encyclopedia when it comes to a lot of these John movies. But um, I, from my knowledge, uh, Kurt Russell always wanted to play an action hero. So he didn't hesitate when John asked him to play, you know, kind of our Clint Eastwood, you know, uh, badass. And uh, speaking of Clint Eastwood, you have uh, Lee Van Cleef and this, who if, if you like Westerns, uh, was uh, of course, Lee Van Cleef played the bad guy in a lot of the Clint Eastwood movies. So it was a cool little, uh, cool homage to, you know, John's love for Westerns. Because if you don't know about John, John's favorite, uh, some of his favorite films or westerns and he got into the movie business to make westerns but by the time he got into them uh, westerns were no longer being made unfortunately so John likes to pay homage to westerns a lot of his movies are pretty much modern westerns okay up next one of my favorite sci-fi films probably my favorite sci-fi film of all time The Thing uh, John Carpenter's classic remake of Howard Hawks's classic black and white The Thing from Another World uh, based on a book I believe called Who Goes There. Um, this one is also signed by the Master of Horror, John Carpenter. Um, man, I freaking love this movie. I, Kurt Russell again. Kurt Russell and John are like the dream team, man. Uh, a movie about paranoia. It's it's almost a perfect movie, even though it's not my favorite John Carpenter movie. Um, it's it's in my top three. Uh, but I, I do think it's his critically best movie. So check it out. Up next, we got a Stephen King to film adaption directed by John Carpenter called Christine. I, I love this movie. Uh, John's score is great in this. This is an out of print uh, Blu-ray of this by uh, a company called Twilight Time who made a limited copy. I think there were like 3,000 of these made or something like that. So this is one of those. And I, 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 flipped, I flipped when I first bought this um, because I bought it for 25 bucks at Amoeba, uh, Amoeba Music, I think is where I was when I bought this. And it was just sitting on the shelf for 25 bucks and there were two of them. And I bought them both because of how out of print they were and I gave one to a friend for his birthday or something. And then up next we got a favorite of mine, uh, not one of John's uh, not, a, not a typical John Carpenter movie, and that's Starman. Uh, not horror, it's a sci-fi romance. Uh, it's a beautiful movie though. Um, I love the soundtrack, I love the story. It has, it has uh, Karen Allen, and it has Jeff Bridges in it. Jeff Bridges was actually nominated for an, an Oscar in his performance in this movie. He plays, uh, the story of this movie is uh, about a woman who uh, lost her husband, and uh, this alien comes down to Earth, and he uh, he kind of morphs himself to look like her husband. Uh, there's more to the story than that, uh, and she's trying to get she's trying to get him back to his planet. 
kind of an ET-esque kind of a movie. But it's a really sweet story. It'll bring a tear to your eye at the end. But yeah, it's a good movie. And uh, John's whole reason for making this was after he made, you know, he made The Thing, Halloween, Christine. Uh, the film critics nicknamed him something like the pornographer of violence. And John kind of took that to heart and was like, you know what? I, I, I can make more than just horror and came out with this and the freaking lead actor was nominated uh, for an Oscar. So I think he did pretty well showing the critics. Up next, we got a, such a fun movie right here. One of my favorites, Big Trouble in Little China. I love this movie. Another Kurt Russell, man. Kurt Russell and John Carpenter, Dream Team. Uh, I love, I love Big Trouble in Little China. This is, another, uh, you know, this is another Screen Factory. You know, sorry, uh, the last couple have been Screen Factories. If you've been paying attention, um, it's just a fun, fun movie, man. It's just a light-hearted uh, action comedy. And then another Screen Factory coming up here. We got a very underrated John Carpenter classic, Prince of Darkness. Uh, this movie's got Donald Pleasance in it, who, who was, of course, in Halloween, and it even has has Mr. Alice Cooper in it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Alice Cooper just plays a minimal part, but it's really cool to see him in it. Uh, it's a fun movie, man. It's a it's it's pretty much a movie about science and religion coming together to fight the devil. It's uh it's a pretty fun movie, and it's pretty dark. All right, up next we've got a classic favorite here classic favorite which is getting a 4k release this is in a screen factory of they live i love this movie i absolutely love this movie yeah it's a, this one's got a lot of social commentary it's got it's got a, it's got a lot of political commentary it's pretty fun to watch um yeah you, you have you have you know one of the longest fight scenes ever in film history and I believe if my memory serves me correctly that was the whole reason there's, there's like a 10 minute long fight scene and it's like the, at, at that time I don't know if it still holds record but John was trying to make the I don't think it holds records anymore but at the time John was trying to make the longest you know fight scene in a movie he's like oh well we've got a wrestler in this movie so let's freaking do it man you got you got Roddy Piper I mean it's just an awesome film man such an awesome film check it out all right one of my least favorite John Carpenter movies, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Uh, it's got Chevy Chase in it, and I was like, oh, Chevy Chase, uh, you know, I love, I love the National Lampoon movies with Chevy Chase. I thought it might be good. It's really awful. And I wouldn't say it's John's fault. The, the Universal, the, the, the studio took over and wanted to make it more of a comedy, and John wanted to make a, like, an Invisible Man remake, but the studio said, no, we want, like, a romantic comedy, and, uh, Memoirs of an, Invis an Invisible Man remake as, an, as a romantic comedy, it does, doesn't really add up. But anyways, next up, an anthology horror that's often forgotten about, Body Bags. I highly recommend this movie if you like Creep Show, if you like anything like that. This is pretty much John Carpenter's version of that. It's John Carpenter teamed up with Toby Hooper. Um, God, who else does a segment in this? Uh, Toby Hooper does a segment, I think. I can't remember the other director in it, um, but anyways, there's a couple segments in this. But John Carpenter, he plays like the wraparound guy, you know, like in Creepshow. There's the creep. Uh, he plays the wraparound guy. He's kind of got like a Beetlejuice personality. Um, but you've got cameos from Wes Craven in the beginning. You've got cameos from Sam Raimi who did Evil Dead. Yeah, Greg Nicotero does a cameo. It's just, and it's an awesome, awesome watch. And it's got Mark Hamill in it. If you're a Star Wars fan. So I highly recommend this movie. It's so much fun. And the master signed this one as well. Sorry, it's hard to see. Story behind this kind of ugly signature is I was getting all these signed at once and my silver pen was dying on me. And you can kind of see that uh, he tried to sign it with the silver pen and then it got kind of faded away. And then he grabbed a black pen really quickly before I could say anything and he just signed it with the black. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take it over nothing. But uh, yeah, man, that's a fun one. Another Screen Factory release. Up next, this movie gets a lot of hate. I don't think it's his worst. Some people pin it as his worst. There's so many other movies. Well, I, I shouldn't say so many other movies. There's a couple others that are much worse than this. Uh, John's remake of Village of the Damned. Uh, 
if you watch my Scream Factory video, just like my copy of uh, The People Under Under the Stairs, there's a hole punch in the back of this one. So I don't have the reverse art cover out, otherwise I'd have a big hole in the front cover. But yeah, the hole was because it was a reviewer copy. It's a fun movie, man. It's got, uh, it has Christopher Reeves in it who played Superman. It's, it's awesome. Uh, and Mark Hamill's in this one too. So another Mark Hamill, John Carpenter project. But yeah, it's a fun one. And then we got a favorite of mine coming up here. It's another Scream Factory. In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, this is a this is a pretty awesome film inspired by by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, totally awesome. It's got a it's got Sam Neill in it from Jurassic Park. Uh, it's it's an awesome movie. Uh, I can't really describe it too much. It's it's kind of weird and out there. I I and I wouldn't want to spoil it for you. I'd recommend you just watching this with you know an open mind and not knowing too much about the film. But it's a it's a good one. Up next, we got a guilty pleasure, a very guilty pleasure. It's uh, Scream Factory's release of Escape from L.A., the sequel to Escape from New York. Uh, nowhere near as good as the first as the first film, but uh, yeah, you know what? I've got a love for it. It's just a lot of fun. It doesn't add up in any way to the first film, but I I find myself having a lot of fun with it. You got Kurt Kurt Russell back as Snake Plissken, you know, it's fun. But uh. Another John Carpenter classic. I, I would probably say this is John's last good film, and that's Vampires. John Carpenter's Vampires. Uh, his last good film is what I would probably say about this one. Um, this movie gets some hate as well. I feel like it's usually people that have read the book. This is based on a book, and a lot of fans of the book don't like this movie. I never read the book, so I find myself enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun movie, man. I, th I would say it's his last like solid film. All right, and coming up here, we got probably my some of my, you know, other than Invisible Man, two of my uh, least favorite uh, John films here. And that's Ghost of Mars, which I believe was originally was originally supposed to be Escape from Earth, a third installment in like the Escape from New York franchise. I don't remember, really remember what happened with that, but they ended up going with Ice Cube, and you know went in a uh, entirely different direction. Uh, not a fan of this one. I mean, it's okay, but I feel obligated to own it. And uh, this movie called The Ward. This is the last uh, big film he did in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. And it's got Amber Heard in it. Um, it kind of has like a Japanese horror-esque feel to it. Uh, it just wasn't done right, in my opinion. It's just I, I wasn't satisfied. I watched it once. I might have to give it a rewatch. Maybe I'll change my mind a little bit. But I remember not liking this one at all. But uh, those are his films, and then I wanted to add really quickly, as a guy who loves Carpenter and wanted to, you know, have his completed works, um, he did two episodes of the Masters of Horror TV show, the anthology show. One of those episodes is Pro Life. Uh, it's a good little anthology segment, not as good as the other one that he did, which is called Cigarette Burns. Um, I don't own Cigarette Burns, which I'm kind of bummed about. Uh, I, I, I have Cigarette Burns on the way in the mail as we speak. Uh, something went wrong with the seller, and uh, he was supposed to give me this one and Cigarette Burns. He forgot that one, so he's sending me it. I didn't have it in time to film the video, but uh, it's on its way, so that will be in my collection. But uh, Cigarette Burns is definitely the better of the two. But uh, Cigarette Burns, if you haven't seen it, it stars uh, Norman Reedus, who's in The Walking Dead. So check that out if you haven't seen it. I believe it's on... Peacock TV or Pluto, one of those free or Tubi, one of those free streaming apps that you can watch. It's on there. All all the Masters of Horror episodes are on there. But watch Cigarette Burns. It's awesome. And then just real quick, uh, live concert by John Carpenter. I, I went to the show in 2016. I've seen him uh, 2016 and 2017. Uh, it's a cool little show he did. He did a tour, and he uh, he just did all of his most of, of his uh, film scores live with the full band and they had scenes from the movies playing in the back it was so freaking awesome and then just really quick I got a cool little uh, John Carpenter documentary that I felt like needed to be added to my collection yeah just kind of go going over his life and his works but uh yeah that's my John Carpenter collection guys uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll have more videos coming your way make sure to like and subscribe